have to love me. Amen. You're right, I do. And I do love you. But neither does God nor the church encourage outward show of sinful lifestyle. But that's where it fits. That's where it fits. I don't need to go down anyone's street because it all applies. All sin applies. All outward sin applies. Is that all right? Well, they aren't understanding how it is. And I brothers and sisters, our physical families are no different. Let me say a word. Physical families are no different. Fathers, we want a successful house. We want the house to stand up. We're going to have to exercise some humility. Yeah, right. We're going to have to understand that we need to have a lower self-view of ourselves. Yeah, right. We're right. going to need to be gentle yeah. with our wives. Yeah. She, we are not the general, and she is not the truth. All right. All right. All right. All right. And she walks to the beat of my drum. That's right. foolishness. Yeah, right. Get your pillow and your blanket and enjoy the couch. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm right. Uh, all right. She better get in line. <laughs> there I go to the couch. <laughs> Save that. Save that. An equation for successful marriages is, is implied right here in the text. How do I know that? Because in the next chapter, yeah. he yeah. shows you the full meaning of marriage. Yeah. He's showing you that the very institution of marriage from the very beginning with yeah. Adam and yeah. Eve is a shadow. Yeah. It, is, yeah. it, is, uh, it, is an, it is a type. Yeah. And the anti-type is the church. Yeah. Yeah. The fullness of this covenant yeah. is the church. Yeah. Trying to get us to understand that Christ the groom. Yeah. He's coming back for his bride, the yeah. church. Yeah. 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 Physical families are no different. We're going to have to be patient with one another. Yes, sir. Wives, you're going to have to be patient with your husbands. Yeah. Husbands, you're going to have to be patient with your wives. Yeah. Peter would give you this admonition. This text has given me so much trouble over the years. Dwell with her yeah. according to knowledge. Yeah. Wait, I, you messed something out, Peter. What? The knowledge of what? Dwell with her according to the knowledge of what? What, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you suggesting there? Well, you fill in the blank. Be patient. Right? Honoring her. Because there are serious ramifications if I don't. He says your prayers will be hindered. I can't afford that. I don't think you can either. Forbearance. Tolerance. How much is that needed with children? How much is that needed with my child? Through her impatience, she is teaching me patience. There's no easy way of learning that lesson. And I say learning, because I'm still learning. I haven't arrived. Where's the motivation? Verse 3. Being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit yeah. in the bond of peace. Yeah. Protect the roof of the house. All right. All right. See, I grew up in an old poor coal mine row house up the creek in abandoned coal mine towns of West Virginia. See, I've lived in two types of ghettos in my life. I, I've, lived, I've lived in a trailer park abandoned coal mine ghetto, and then I've lived in the largest ghetto in the midst of central Harlem. They are no different. The challenges and sinful behaviors are just the same. There was racism where I grew up. There was racism where I moved to as a young man. What is yet the answer? Christ. What is yet the answer? The church. Hold up the roof of the house, which points in one direction, upward, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of 
peace. I, I need to say a little bit more about that, but I know my time is fleeting, and therefore I need to talk about some staples that are going to keep the roof together. Right. <laughs> Twice does Paul use this notion of unity, and it's here right in the same context. It doesn't vary, and it does, and we don't see notions far beyond this. He's using it twice in the same context. First, he says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. If I can take some liberty and jump out of my text and jump to verse number 11, he's, uh, first I need, to, I need to stop at verse 8, because he says... Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. Notice the Bible does not say he gave men gifts. Oh, I'm not straining at words here. I believe that's the direct implication of the text. He gave gifts unto men. Uh, we can take the time from verses 9 to 11 to talk about the ascension and how he descended. Yes, thank you, Paul, and I, and I apologize if I'm running over that, but I need to get to verse number 11 to talk about the gifts that were given. Yeah. Brothers, you cannot be given a, a, a gift to be an apostle. No, no, you, that's, that's not a gift that you receive. That's not a gift that I have to contribute. Yet, these gifts were the apostles. These gifts were prophets. Listen to my part of speech. We know they were because the Bible tells us that it was a limited position. From the basis of the apostles in Acts chapter 1, the ending thereof is the qualifications. No one's going to meet that today. By means of prophecy, I don't want to hear jargon about we're still foretelling and no one's foretelling. Just call yourself a preacher. <laughs> Prophecies have ceased, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Yet, gifts are still being given to the church. Yeah. Who? Evangelists? Yeah. Yeah. Pastors, that's shepherds. Yeah. Yeah. And teachers. Yeah. These are all gifts yeah. still being given to the church. Right. Brothers and sisters, this is where we're going to have to help one another out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I read nowhere that the role of the evangelist is a limited position like the apostles and prophets. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I do not read about a pulpit minister wherein my only assignment to serve is the pulpit. Oh, I know exactly what I'm saying. And you know exactly what I'm implying. And this may be the very reason for which I'm still looking for a church. The role of the evangelist is not a limited commission. It is not a limited assignment. His role, his scope, and his function is still as relevant today as it was when it was, a, as when it was initiated. And therefore, how do I know that? Watch the text continue to read. He says, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets, some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers. What for, Paul? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ until... Have we arrived at that point? So it's still needed. The apostles fulfilled their purpose. The prophets fulfilled their purpose. Evangelists still have a purpose. Pastors, shepherds, elders still have a purpose. And it's not to tell the evangelists what to do. not the primary purpose. Evangelist, it's not your primary purpose to tell the elders what to do. That's not your primary purpose. I'll just let that set. And I'll meet anyone at the back door that wants to ask me about that. Like I'm ready to do, I'm, I, don't, I don't preach a doctrine that cannot withstand interrogation. And you shouldn't either. He says, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. We have not arrived there. Therefore, we are still striving 
for the unity of the Spirit yeah. Yeah. in the bond of peace. Yes. We are still striving to maintain the unity yeah. of the faith. Yeah. That's the body of truth. Yes, That's what you believe. Yes. That's not your belief. The faith is what you believe. And it was once for all time delivered unto the saints. Yeah. 4 through 6, back in Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, our unity, brothers and sisters, is going to start with what we believe. Yeah. You need to be clear about that. Yeah. Our unity starts with what we believe. Yeah. All right, now. Are you convicted? Are you believing? That there is one body. Yeah. Not in concept. Yeah. Not in concept. Do you believe. That there is one body. And that we're not to operate. Like Abraham and Lot. You go your way. And I go my way. One body. If I don't get to say anything more, let me drop this on you. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. Peter says that you're a royal priesthood. A chosen generation. I have a problem with that word generation. I understand it's in the King James. I understand that, that it may be of accuracy to some degree in translation but it does not fit the notion that Peter is trying to put forth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. To say generation, it implies a group of people born in a particular time. Yeah. Yet the literal translation, are you listening? Yeah. He says you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen race. When Christ built the church and when a new name was given, a new race was created. No longer. And, and listen to me. Listen to me. God has told us for centuries that he does not see the face of man. Amen. That he looks to the heart of man. Yeah. 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 I believe this notion is put here for us to help us understand that we are now one more for us yeah. than for God. Because yeah. God has never looked at the face of man. Yeah. He's always looked at the heart. Yeah. This is for us yeah. to know that Christians, God sees us as one race. Yeah. No more black, no more white, no more red, no more yellow. Nothing. Save that. Save that. Save that. We have to stop, brothers and sisters. The media is going to is trying to dictate further division among the American population. And brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to imply anything of any wrongdoing and non-wrongdoing. I'm just telling you, you need to not let the world dictate the church. And all people fall into sin. But we cannot allow any form of, of racism and disunity in our country dictate the unity of the church. Now I speak boldly to you because I'm strongly convinced that the church can impact the world. Amen. The church, the body of believers, we had the opportunity to do so during the time of the civil rights movement. But our schools were segregated. I'm talking about Church of Christ institutes were segregated. The whole notion of the beginning of the Southwestern Christian College. I understand my history. You want to talk, talk to Dr. Wells about that. He shamed the church in Harlem because I knew more about Marshall Keeble and G.P. Bowser. Look, I can name the, I can call the Roman. More than some of our own folk. I know the reasons for these things. And we had the opportunity as the church to make a staple yeah. and to show unity and show the ability that we can be a one group of people yeah. 
and we failed. We allowed the government to step in and do it. Amen. Here we are again. Having the opportunity for the church to change the world. The church to change society. For the church to change the very notion of racism. To declare it and expose it and reveal it for the ignorance and sin that it is. God looks to the heart of man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in Christ, he has created one race. Yes, Christians. Amen. Amen. One body. Yes, one body of believers. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Are you convicted enough by that to do something about it? Right. Right. That becomes the question. Because, brothers and sisters, I'm going to speak frankly. And I may be speaking out of turn. Speak on, brother. But hear me now. Yeah. I fear, as I survey, predominantly Caucasian congregations are going to need help from us, brothers and sisters, yeah. because they have become islands unto themselves. Yeah. It's not a matter of, don't, 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 feel, don't feel like you're being singled out and like, like, like nobody wants to fellowship with you. Most of them don't fellowship with one another. Islands. Islands. Unto themselves. Foolishness. Foolishness. We have taken the notion of autonomy and stretched it and bound it on things that God never intended. We're going to... Do you want some application? And I'm sure my time is running out. Somebody give me a, give me a, a wink or a, a thumbs up. The application is brothers and sisters. While some of these congregations may have ignored your invitations, may have ignored your request of participation, keep inviting them. Amen. Keep reaching out. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm speaking from the depths of my soul here. Amen. Evangelists, yeah. elders, yeah. you're going to have to reach out and try to Amen. make relationships. Amen. And vice versa. Yeah. I'm doing what I can, where I can, and when I can. Yes, but brothers and sisters, it's going to have to go both ways. And even though your, your request for attendance at your gospel meetings, that attendance for requests for your programs have been declined, ignored, maybe even shunned upon, keep sending them. Keep making relationships. Keep reaching out. If not for any other reason than it is what God would have you to do. We need each other. Yes, and we are going to be the show to the world yes, of what unity looks like. Yes, we are that chosen people. Yes, we are that royal priesthood. Yes, we are that chosen race. Yes, Nothing else. There's one faith. Just one. Yes, one system of belief that God has deemed acceptable. And you want to talk about aiming uh, the body of Christ to be a people of passion. A people of purpose. Yeah, a people yeah. of power. Yes, sir. You're going to have to align your purpose with God's eternal purpose. This is where I'll come to a conclusion. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 10. Yeah. Brothers and sisters. The Apostle Paul tells us that the eternal purpose of God is that in the fullness of times. Yeah. He might gather together all things in one where? In Christ. That's it. That's the church. That's who's going to heaven. Amen. That's right. That's exactly right. That's the final roundup of human affairs. He's talking about the calling together of both those things that are on earth and those things in the earth. For we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This is going to occur in the church. Do you believe that? Are you convicted enough to do something about it? Because this is what I find. 
And we could go on. I could talk to you about the other six ones. That there is not only one spirit, but one hope of your calling. See, we have the same hope of our calling. Amen. We all have the same hope of heaven. Yeah. I, don't, I don't plan on being in a white heaven. <laughs> don't want to be. <laughs> Do you plan on being in just an Afro-American heaven? No, sir. Come on, bro. One hope of our calling. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. That's the hope that I have. Is it the same hope that you have? Family ties will keep us built up together. I could, I could talk to you a little bit, bit more about one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. But I need to tell you this before I have my seat. Family ties, trusses, humility, gentleness, patience, forbearance will keep us built together, but strongholds will continue to divide us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I leave you with these words from the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful. For the destruction of of fortresses yeah. that's strongholds brothers and that's sisters it. culture and thinking that there is salvation in culture is a stronghold that will continue to divide right. strongholds of racism will continue to divide strongholds of economic classism will continue to divide you sound like a communist brother ballard save that mess <laughs> tearing down of strongholds. Yes, and we will do that yes. with the same divine power that the Apostle Paul had right. through the Word of God, yes. whereby he says, casting down yes. imagination yes. and everything yes. that exalts itself above yes. the knowledge of Christ. Yes. Watch him now. Yes. Watch him now. Yes. He yes. says, and bringing into captivity yes. every thought yes. Unto the obedience of Christ Jesus. That's how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to continue to tear down strongholds. That's how we're going to continue to be unified. Family ties will keep us built up together. Strongholds will divide us. Make your choice.